Hello again, my name is Gabe Zolna. This is the 15th of March 2019. The article was posted back on January 27th, 2012. Qantas jet passenger saw engine blow up live on in flight TV screens. Hmm. Passengers last night told of the terrifying moment they thought their Qantas Super Jumbo was about to plunge from the sky after an engine blew up. You know, I watch air disasters on TV. Don't know if you ever tuned into that, but you might want to. They did a remake of this entire story, and it was extremely well done. The captain was actually doing a check ride. He was being checked out by other check officers to make sure that he was adequately flying the plane. So they had the co-pilot and they had three other pilots directly behind them. You saw that in the remake of this video. Panic gripped the cabin of the Airbus 380 as a loud bang echoed to the fuselage and a trail of smoke, flames and debris filled the sky. The horror came as it was revealed safety bosses had warned in August the Rolls-Royce Trent 900 engine was potentially unsafe because of a turbine problem caused by wear on a coupling. Actually, that wasn't the problem. I'll talk about the problem towards the end. After yesterday's scare, Qantas immediately grounded all six of its 380 Airbuses, the flagship of its 191-strong fleet. Captain Richard Crispy tried to reassure the 433 passengers on board that the drama was under control, but many realized there had been a catastrophic problem and fear quickly spread. Aussie Tyler Worcester said, my whole body just went to jelly and I didn't know what was going to happen as we were going down. I heard this massive bang like a shotgun going off, part of the skin had peeled off and you could see foam, pieces of broken wire sticking out. Britain Mike Tooley was watching footage of the takeoff from Singapore Changi Airport on a jet's in-flight video, shot from the tail of the plane when one of the four engines exploded at 20,000 feet. He said suddenly there was a loud bang and a puff of white smoke from one of the left-hand engines. Everyone let out a very large gasp. We all knew something had gone terribly wrong. There was quite a lot of vibration as soon as the engine had pretty much disintegrated. We could see parts of the engine had blown away. Glasgow's DL Lars Sandberg added, the carriage started to vibrate and there was smoke. I was sitting right next to the engine too. People around me were visibly shaken and we all realized that whatever happened wasn't normal. The captain admitted there was a problem but he kept reassuring us every couple of minutes when he got off and saw the engine itself and the back casing burnt off. It was pretty scary. I'm just happy to be alive, German businessman Ulief Washbuck said. I saw flames coming out from where the engine was and knew there were problems. I saw pieces of the engine fly off the wing in short bursts of flame. It was one of the scariest things I had seen on an aircraft. Matt Hewitt from Cheshire added there was smoke trails running from the wing. Some people saw the actual breakage of the wing. There was parts sticking up and wires hanging out. His girlfriend, Haley Collins, told how he texted her shortly after the blaze. She said, I got a text at 3.30 a.m. to say, don't be alarmed, but an engine has blown up in mid-flight and torn a hole in the wing. I started to panic. It was an agonizing two-hour wait before I heard from him again to say they had landed safely. Flight QF-32 was en route from London to Sydney when the drama unfolded. Captain Anders Crispy calmly told passengers, I'm not sure you realize, I'm sure you realize there's a problem. We have to find out what the problem is. Then they had to endure a nightmare 90 minutes in the sky above Indonesia as flames flew past their windows while the pilot flew around dumping fuel to make the huge jet light enough to land. All right, so there's more for you to read, but what they showed in the redramatization, and again, it was excellent. It was really well done. What happened was uh, when the engine blew, it took out a lot of the control mechanisms, so the aircraft uh, wasn't uh, as, as controllable as it would have been prior to the accident. And the captain made sure that he could do gentle turns 
which he might have to do on approach to landing. And they had a lot of other uh, warning lights go on. They didn't know if the landing gear was locked down or not. Uh, they deployed the landing gear uh, and it fell by gravity because the mechanism to lower them wasn't functioning properly. And when they landed the jet safely on the ground, uh, they, they weren't able to shut down one of the engines because the wires had been torn. And they contacted uh, the um, controllers and then they contacted the manufacturer and they contacted uh, Qantas in Australia and uh, they suggested to hit it with a fire hose. So they had a fire hose blasting water in, but the engine still wouldn't shut down. And they wouldn't let the passengers off the aircraft because there was danger. There still could have been an explosion. And so what they ended up doing was they ended up uh, injecting foam and that snuffed out the engine. And once that was snuffed out, they were able to deplane. And when the engine was further examined, what they found was a small oil bypass pipe. The pipe wasn't manufactured properly. The thickness varied and it gave way at the thinnest portion of the pipe. And what that did is it sprayed oil onto a very large section of the engine that spins at a very high rate. And what ended up happening was the engine component increased in size and it finally disintegrated. They went ahead and they made sure that all of the other similar aircraft had those pipes inspected and if necessary replaced. Again, a little tiny pipe could have ended in disaster. And if that wouldn't have happened, and they wouldn't have found it, other planes might have experienced that.